Happy Fracking Friday, Decipher. This is Sean McBride. Today I'd like to show you some of the work I've been, been doing today around the more advanced capabilities provided by Prometheus. So Prometheus is a specialized database for time series metrics. It's something that we brought into our gray matter architecture this quarter in order to allow us to work on historic metrics. Um, and, and that work is going pretty good, but Prometheus also has some more advanced capabilities, in particular alerting, which I think would be really useful to our gray matter product. And I'd like to show an example that I put together today of what that kind of looks like. And then at the end, um, at the end of this video, kind of discuss what the, what, what it might kind of look like from a gray matter perspective if we were to use this. So first of all, um, the reason I was able to get this done in one day is I was able to find a really great Docker Swarm uh, demo repository for Prometheus, including all of the optional components such as node exporter and, um, and the alert manager. And so I was able to basically just fork it and do my work on top, and that has worked out really great. So. If you want to go ahead and run anything that I've done here, um, just take a look at Bushido Code's Prometheus. The other open source component that I've, I've used today is, is um, the third party community supported client for Node.js. Uh, Prometheus, for the most part, expects you to instrument your code to provide um, a Prometheus scrape point that it can hit. And I've gone ahead and actually instrumented a very small Node.js script. I can show you that really quickly. So all that this app does is really present two routes. If you hit root route, you get hello world. If you hit slash decipher, you get hello decipher. And each of these increment a single HTTP request counter, which use labels to go ahead and uh, differentiate the HTTP verbs and the, and the paths that are used. And then all of these metrics are reported back out at slash metrics. One of the nifty things about the, the third party library I'm using is it has this collect default metrics um, function, which basically will make a lot of sane, create a lot of sane defaults for us. So if I go over here, we can see slash decipher. I can hit that and I get hello decipher. I can go to slash, I get hello world. And then I can go to metrics and we can see the metrics. So we have CPU seconds, start time, virtual memory, heat, um, a kind of unusual node metric is this event loop lag seconds, which is a pretty common performance metric for node since it's asynchronous and really depends on the event loop. And then here at the bottom, we can see um, our requests we get for slash decipher and the root route. Okay, cool. So in addition to implementing the, um, the demo app, I also have configured some, some different alerts here. So in particular, the one that I'm going to demonstrate today is this high request count alert, which basically um, takes a look at the request per second rate averaged out over a given minute. It does that every 15 seconds. And when four samples in a row have a rate that exceeds half a request per second, so that would be 30 requests over the course of a minute, then it triggers the alert. Um, probably not a super useful alert. I just wanted to be able to make sure that when I hit refresh really quick, I can actually trigger the notification. So we have that alert and let's kind of talk about what happens when that alert gets triggered. I've, for the sake of this demo, I've chosen to create um, a whole new Slack organization called Prom Demo Land. And all that this uh, exists for is just basically allowing me to connect up an integration 
and have it report out the alerts through a webhook. So here's basically the webhook I've created. And okay, that's that's cool. So over here, this is this is Grafana, and I can go ahead and log in. And to do a little bit of red teaming while I'm in here, one of the neat things about Grafana is you get a lot of um, dashboards out of box. So Grafana already knows how to speak Prometheus and build out Prometheus query languages. And it has a lot of default dashboards that you can present. So here's a default dashboard based on how everything is configured. We can see like a lot of just infrastructure type stuff like network input, network output, memory usage, things like that. We can see our alerts here. Some of these are older ones that got triggered earlier. Um, but I want to show basically the process of creating a new new dashboard. So okay, so if I go here and click this plus sign, I can create a graph. I can edit this graph. I can say I want to use Prometheus as a data source, and then I can type in my PromQL query here. So I want to use a function called rate. I want to do HTTP requests. And we can see that it has already like basically uh, done type ahead for this metric because it sees this in the time series database. And I want to, just like the alert, average out the, the, the rate request per second rate over one minute. And then um, just to be a little bit more precise, let's go ahead and only take a look at the demo app. So we can see again, we've got type ahead. So that experience of typing in that, that query there with you know documentation and type ahead and all that is pretty great. And that's, that's some of the cool stuff that Grafana in particular provides. So I can go to query inspector here just to make sure that it actually works and I can get the response object here. And yeah, that's working great. So now over here we can see historic metrics, including like a, another instance from a previous run because I'm persisting the database across when I take the cluster up and down. Okay, so here, here we go. We now have just, we're showing the last five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back over to this route. And the goal is to just really slam this thing hard to be able to see that graph like shoot up quite a bit and then to see the alert get triggered. So I'm just holding down the command R key and we're just gonna hit this a bunch Okay, now let's take a look at here. So we were at 461 or something like that before. No, that was that was old. So now we're at 60. Let's hit some more. I'm looking down here towards the bottom. Now we went to 109. Let's see what that looks like on the chart. Oh, we're shooting up quite a bit. Cool. So now let's take a look at the alert manager. And if I refresh here, you can kind of see what's happening. So it shows high request count, which is good, and it shows pending. So what this means is the, um, the threshold of this expression is evaluating to greater than 0 0.5 seconds, but it hasn't quite yet done it enough consecutive times to trigger the alert. So let's just keep keep hitting the uh, the route here, and then what we'll see is uh, the trigger will go from a pending state to an active state. Okay, hit that a bunch. Refresh here, looking good. Refresh here. 
still impending. Okay, so this is just going to take a little bit of time. Um, one other thing worth mentioning is once this goes active and it triggers the um, the push event to the the Slack endpoint, it can take a little bit of time for that to propagate through that infrastructure as well. So here we go. Turned red. It's now, or excuse me, not active. It's a firing state. So this should be firing the trigger, which should be producing an alert here in Slack. So we go here and we can see 424. We got this new event. We didn't get the notification in Notification Center because I was recording this video earlier and Tillery was slacking me a bunch of stuff and boy, that was distracting. So disable those things. Um, so these are actually links and the link isn't going to resolve since I'm running this all locally. And we have this kind of stalker goofiness here. So, but I've mapped the port. So if I do that, I'm not totally sure what's going on here. Maybe I didn't quite do that right. Anyway, um, the alert triggered, you click this and it's a configurable endpoint for what this points to. Um, so imagine that this is some sort of uh, web user interface, perhaps even the gray matter fabric dashboard, where you can basically look at detailed charts related to whatever produced the trigger. And in fact, that's something that we can actually accomplish because if you take a look at this notification template stuff here, we have the ability to customize what these, um, these notifications that go to Slack or HipChat or whatever else look like. And we do that using the Go templating system. And in here, you can, you can change what it looks like and the specific text we use and how it gets templated out. But we can also um, define the URL that we direct to. So that means basically that this can be named whatever we want. This could be named um, gray matter fabric. We could have our decipher logo here. We control the content here and we control what this links to. And so that would allow us to link back to our gray matter fabric dashboard app. So in short, Prometheus provides a alerting component with a lot of um, with a lot of integration points. If I like, click through here, I think they show, they show some examples. So we've got email, we've got Slack, we've got HipChat, we've got PagerDuty, we've got all this different stuff. We just like inherit that. You know, yeah, here we go. WeChat also. Um, we inherit all that stuff just by using the Prometheus Alert Manager. Uh, we could treat this as an internal hard dependency that's part of our architecture, and that would provide us a really quick path to provide alerts that support all of these different integrations here. Um, and we've got the ability to customize what the, what the notifications look like and um, link that back to our user interfaces. So. If we wanted to do this, we'd basically have to implement some, some user interfaces to allow users to configure the, the triggers, which is kind of like what I'm showing here, like these different, these different alerts and things. I would expect this, this kind of functionality to be inside a gray matter fabric dashboard component. Um, and then at that point, like, it doesn't really matter that this is like core to our architecture. The end user is not going to really experience that one way or the other, other than being able to use PromQL, which is a really powerful query language. So I hope this was educational and that you got something out of this. I think Prometheus is, is, is super interesting 
um, and the query language is, is just incredibly powerful. Um, I've gone through like a 400 page book that Doug lent to me over the past couple of days and I've just been blown away by all the different ways you can monitor and come up with like really complex queries to show all sorts of things. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your fracking Friday and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye.